Love transforms all misfortunes into delights. Love transforms all misfortunes into delights. Okay, well, in having a look at this statement, the key word here to look at is misfortunes. Now, if we look at, for example, the misfortune of starvation or the misfortune of uh, being a child that was sold into sex trafficking or the misfortune of a child getting their limbs blown off in a war or the misfortune of a child being trained as a soldier or the misfortune of a child that must work 14 hours a day in a sweatshop to survive, or the misfortune of a child that lives in a landfill or a slum city. Basically anyone in this world, half the world exists in poverty, lives on less than two dollars a day, with like a billion people starving. And what does that mean? That means that every day you're in physical pain, discomfort, suffering, and the thing that you're focusing on is how to survive another day, how to get money, how to stay warm, how to avoid illness, how to avoid being killed, harmed. These are the kind of conditions endured by half the world because they don't have money and because they're is such that they simply do not have a chance at something more. There is no American dream for half the world. I mean, there's no American dream for most of America. So, obviously when we look at such misfortunes, you can see that love, whether someone's telling you as you're starving to death daily that they love you and that they're sending you love, no amount of love is going to transform that kind of misfortune into a delight for the person experiencing it. I mean, to, to make such a statement is pure delusion. So, obviously the statement is not referring to the misfortune that half the world is born into with no chance of getting out of. So what misfortune is this statement referring to? This statement is referring to the misfortunes experienced by who? By people with money. By people whose lives are relatively comfortable and easy. Who don't have to worry every day about hunger and avoiding being killed. Who live in a relatively safe part of the world that's protected because more of the people there have money so they're not at each other's throats trying to compete for survival as uh, harshly with one another. So when you have money, when you're living a middle-class lifestyle, let's say as a spiritual person, and let's say you experience the misfortune of uh, having an illness, cancer, which you while you're experiencing it is unpleasant, you're suffering, but you get treatment because you have money so that you can have health insurance and have afford to have expensive cancer treatments and you, you manage to overcome your cancer. And then once you're healed, you have the luxury as a person with money of being able to go back to your life and do the things that you like doing and spend time with the people that you love and kind of forget about that misfortune you experienced and look back on it and see it as a loving lesson that taught you how to look at things with a positive attitude. I experienced that misfortune because I had to learn to look at things with a positive attitude. To not judge them negatively, but to look at it as a lesson of love from the loving creator or from my loving higher self that gave me that misfortune to, to teach me how to feel good more of the time 
or maybe you lose your wallet, or there's a storm and your house floods, or you fall and you break your arm or your leg, or your car, you get in a car crash and you're injured for a while and you heal, and again, you have money, so you go back to your comfortable lifestyle and you have the luxury of being able to look back on that misfortune and, and, and look at it as a, a lesson in, in how to experience more love in my life and delight in this experience of love. So, those of us with money have the ability to delight in our misfortunes as lessons of how to learn how to make ourselves feel more love. But, obviously, a person starving every day cannot do this. They have no life to go back to if they break their arm or if they are, they are ill. I mean, their entire life is a misfortune. Incarnate as the, the life of the starving person. I mean, they exist as misfortune. They have nothing else. They can't be more. They can't become anything. They're completely enslaved by their condition because they have no money, they have no access to money. So, this statement doesn't apply to half the world, it only applies to people with money. It's a message directed to people with money that assists people with money to feel better about the bad things that happen in their lives, so what? So that they can go back to their lives and continue pursuing happiness. And who, again, who does that really benefit? Does it benefit the poor? Does it benefit the starving child or the star child whose limbs got blown off in the war? No, it benefits those in power who abuse life for profit. Because as long as the, all the consumers are not questioning this reality, not questioning the pain and suffering in this world, and are instead using pain and suffering in their own lives and seeing it in the lives of others as lessons of how I can make myself feel good and experience love, then no one's going to take any action to remove, to, to end, to stop the suffering of half the world who's in poverty. Because they're too busy experiencing love and delighting in the experience of love delighting in all the things that make life enjoyable, that are available within the consumer system, where you can use money to build a lifestyle. But that delight is tainted by the knowledge, by the awareness that there are people out there who don't have what I have, and who will never have what I have, who will die of starvation today, tomorrow, next week. So that's uh, uh, delighting in separation because how can one delight in a feeling of love while half the world is in poverty how can one delight in a feeling of, of love while there's children starving I don't understand one must ask yourself who am I that accepts myself and allows myself to delight in a feeling of love and to make light of suffering while so many people do not have the ability to do the same because they don't have money. I mean, if we want a world of delight, then we have to make sure that we give to everyone equally that which allows us to delight in the earth experience. Not just some of us, all of us. And I mean, it's our delight is spite when we view the suffering of others in this world as, oh, that's just their higher choice that they made. And those really bad things that are happening out there in the world are only there so that I can learn to look at them with love and not see them as a problem. Which again is perfect for those who abuse life for profit because when we don't see the suffering of others as a problem, then we'll accept the system and be an obedient consumer that focuses on the pursuit of happiness. So if you can see the 
problem with this statement love transforms all misfortunes into delights then I suggest you dedicate yourself to exposing this kind of separation exposing this kind of self-interest which is really based on the fear of facing the pain and suffering and misfortune that exists in this world because you look at it and you react to it because you know that if you were in that position you'd be suffering and you don't have a solution <coughs> and you've already reacted with an emotion so then you get out of that emotion you project the opposite as a feeling of love and bam that problem is transformed into love because now I'm not looking at it with an emotion of fear I'm looking at it with a feeling of love but has anything changed in terms of the actual suffering that that person is experiencing? No, obviously not, because it's a physical problem. It's not an emotional feeling problem. The misfortune that so many people endure in this world is not something that can be fixed with feelings. Feelings are invisible. The feeling of love didn't help John Lennon when he was assassinated because physical acts of abuse always overpower feelings of love because feelings of love have no weight in the physical reality because the physical reality is not feelings it's physical it's visible so if one claims to be delighting in love while not taking action in every moment of one's time here to do whatever it takes to end the atrocities that exist in this world in the name of profit and self-interest, then one is not a being of love and one is not delighting in love, one is delighting in self-interest and self-delusion. That's not love. It's time for humanity to realize this, especially those with money because those of us with money are the ones that have the ability to stand together, design a new world system and implement it politically because we're the majority. I mean, the few in power, those politicians that everyone judges to be evil, they don't have any power except the power we give them because they're the minority and we're the majority. So if the majority is not standing together and working out a practical solution to give to everyone in this world the unconditional support that the earth provides so that everyone can delight in life, then there's no one to blame but ourselves. And hiding in love is not going to design a new world system. I mean, common sense. There's a massive lack of common sense, a massive absence of common sense in spirituality. When one starts to look at itself honestly with the courage to face the suffering of others that exist in this world. It doesn't take courage to hide in an experience of love that's only possible because one has money. It takes courage to not value one's feeling of love, but to value what's best for all life. And to delight in doing what's best for all. Because that would be a pure delight delighting in a feeling of love while so many suffer, that's tainted by self-interest, by the awareness that there's beings suffering that do not have the opportunity and the ability to feel good like I feel because I have money. So, suggest so read the blog that I've written on this topic which expands on how to take responsibility within this point to remove this point of self-delusion with self-forgiveness. The self-forgiveness statements are laid out and self-commitment sta statements are laid out and I suggest you read the self-forgiveness and the self-commitment statements out loud considering the words and considering your relationship as a human being here on earth in the physical reality your relationship to all other beings here and ask yourself am I what is best for all or am I what is best for people who abuse life in the name of profit am I living in oneness or am I living in separation what am I supporting through my allowance of a feeling of love
So in 2012, it should be the year we transform delight from the starting point of delighting in self-interest to delighting in doing what's best for all. Because if we're not delighting in doing what's best for all, life, then our delight is a lie. 